What up? Internet world, it's your boy Ed the Dread. Coming at you from the top of a 50 foot coconut tree. What's up you guys? Man, I love y'all, thank you. Today we got a story time. Because I'm just chilling up here having a good one. <laughs> We're gonna call this one Story Time. Bow! I was trimming a coconut tree. Boom! And the earwig jumped in my ear. Ah! And tried to dig into my brain. Oh! So I was actually up in this tree. It's a beautiful tree. I actually like this tree. It's one of my favorite trees to climb. Oh, look, bees are working. Okay, so every full moon, a coconut tree releases a frond. And one of those big fat things, which releases all these, which then the bees pollinate and they become coconuts. <laughs> Crazy! So I was actually up this tree about six months ago and I cut one of the fronds down and as I did a bunch of earwigs came out um, uh, I don't know if you know what an earwig is but if not it looks like this so this thing with the pincher face there's like a hundred of them coming out of this like old kind of rotten frond so they start falling out crawling out oh quick side note also those things fly okay so if an earwig drops from like a 50 foot tree about 30 feet down, that thing spreads wings and starts flying, right? I don't know if it's like a instinct when you're only dropping about 30 feet, but it don't happen if you drop in 15, 20, they just hit the ground. But 30 foot or higher, then things start flying. Anyway, I'm up this tree, a bunch of earwigs start coming out. Now, I generally have this same thing going on with a hat, hat bun and kerchief bandana over the ears. Before, what I was doing was putting my glasses under the bandana, which kind of left some opening. And uh, as I made the cut of the full frond, uh-oh, I just went under the thing, I think. All right. As I made the cut of the full frond, the freaking thing shot out a bunch of them. And then one hits me in the side, and I was like, oh, took my glove off, tried to get ready to swipe it off. And as I went for the swipe, the bugger crawled in my ear straight in the ear so now it's digging into my head like I mean literally digging into my head like inside inside and it's going deeper and deeper and I'm up here freaking out screaming and screaming and I'm trying to shake it out and every time I shake it it just goes deeper and I'm just like oh my god it's like deeper than anything I've ever felt in my ear so now I'm shimmying down the tree as fast as I freaking can which wasn't that fast and about every 10 feet the thing goes a little deeper into my head so when I finally get down, the woman whose house it is, she comes out and she's like, what's going on? I'm like, give me a cup of water. And I pour water in there, which I think that had the effect of it was trying to get away from the water and it just went deeper. So now I'm freaking out and I'm stomping, slamming my head around, putting water in my head, trying to figure it out. So then I just asked her to get like alcohol, hydrogen peroxide. So she has peroxide and it took three full peroxide flushes for this thing to pop out of my ear. And it jumps out onto the freaking ground. <laughs> and she's like, you're gonna smash it? And I'm like, nah, it's just living its life. And that's my story. <laughs> Live and direct from the same tree that the buggers came out of. It's a beautiful tree. We're gonna end this one by dropping a big rack of fat knocks. I don't even know what I'm saying. Dropping nuts, getting earwigs in your ear, and watching bees pollinate the cocos. Stay in life with your boy, Ed the Dread, all right? Live it up, get outside, climb something. Maybe not a tree this high, but climb a tree. Shout out to my boy, Stick Bug, always up in a tree. Um, and let's save the bees, all right, because...
they're sick and we need them.